Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe or follow no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Fellas, if my calculations are correct, this is going to pop up exactly on Christmas. And you know what that means? A Shane Black movie. What do you guys think of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Kiss Kiss Under the Mistletoe with old Shane Black. I like everything that this movie had to offer, but I don't think I really like the movie in <laughs> that sense. Okay, this was my pick. I had seen it, I don't know, a decade or so ago, maybe longer, and I remember enjoying it. Remember it being Christmassy, so I wanted to put a non-Christmas Christmas movie on the list. On the rewatch, still like it. I don't love it, though. I think we're all on the same page. This is exactly a movie. Now, I feel like I've said that before, but like, this movie is equally as ambitious as it is kind of like, I don't know, regular, <laughs> you know? We, yes. I think we all agree that at a certain point, the movie just kind of like loses all momentum. Still kind of quirky, but maybe a second viewing isn't going to happen anytime soon kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree. Like, uh, in the first probably hour of this movie is kind of exactly a Chandler movie. There's lots of witty banter. There's lots of stuff going on. There's a little bit of crime, some drugs, some hot women. What more could you ask for? And then it just kind of like realizes that it needs to complete a story. And that's when it loses yeah. me. I do enjoy that. You listed off those things like you're checking boxes off like, honey, this has crime in it. <laughs> and... It says on the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and bitches got both of them <laughs> and those bitches gotta leave <laughs> oh Clarence yeah. Boddicker so speaking of the bitches I gotta say uh, <laughs> they're the, the lead actress lady I don't know her name I didn't really look it up she was there's no other way to put it and it seems like a lot of this is like improv or like first take but they're really really yeah. really good first takes so it's okay there's a scene where Val Kilmer goes to hug her after she saves him and he tries to kiss her and she's like mm -mm, and they play it off like he just didn't try to kiss her and you go why'd they leave that in you know what i mean I, but i didn't yeah. even I, notice that yeah uh the actress's name for those keeping track at home is michelle monahan she's most well known for gone baby gone which i haven't seen uh oh, yeah. also this but to oh, me she, she looks like a uh yeah she's very attractive young lady. To me, she looks like a blonde Liv Tyler, and I'm all for that. I don't think I had any issues with her, per se, but, like, the whole most of this movie kind of feels like ad-lib. Yeah, that kind of sticks out. It almost feels like, well, this being a Shane Black picture, not only directed but written by, his sense of humor is very fucking archaic. Like, there's tons of crude humor, which is fine, but it almost sounds like every time somebody has, like, just, like, a a witty zinger just to zing the shit out of somebody it sounds like it just fell out of like a 15 year old boy's mouth yeah that happens a lot one of the biggest instances is where val kilmer explains himself i didn't bother to really remember but he's giving his lines and him and robert downey jr are holding a gun on somebody and they're like yeah you better give us the information because that's robert downey jr and i'm the expletive gay slur <laughs> yeah we have to go over that just for a little posterity so Robert Downey Jr. is this thief. He's from New York. He gets tricked into coming to L.A. Spoilers, I guess. And he's at this party. That's where we kind of catch up with him. And we also catch up with Val Kilmer, who's a, a gay detective. And that is his entire crux. Like, every joke is just like a gay bash. Every fucking thing out of his mouth is just like, yeah, cock is good. What of it? <laughs> it's it just like, after a while, I'm just like, is there anything else? <laughs> as much as I love Val Kilmer, as much as I enjoyed seeing him, He's just a great actor. I love seeing him on the screen. It's just like, man, nothing here, huh? Yep, this is my pistol. Its name is... You can go ahead and beep that. I'm not going to say it. It's that word, you know. Well, I'm not going to put a beep where there's nothing. <laughs> well, maybe I will. On to the expletive pistol. Uh, that's such a great bit because, like, they're getting tortured and that guy's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fuck you up. He's like, oh, dude, you just want to fuck me, don't you? Don't you? You want to fuck me? And the bad guy's like, yeah, dude, I want it bad. He's like, come get this hog. And he's, like, digging in his pants. And you go, what is that? And then he starts shooting him with that little Saturday Night Special. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. It was fucking uncomfortable, but it worked. It did work. And not only because of that, it was because there was a scene where Iron Man was getting his balls tortured while Batman shot a dude with his dick gun. 
Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm not even sure what was happening to Robert Downey Jr.'s nuts in that scene. They kept the camera so high that I was like, something bad is happening. Don't know what it is. Is it? Are they getting squeezed? I mean, it takes place during Christmas, so mm. his chestnuts <laughs> were thoroughly roasted. Mm. It's it's way down the line. Yeah, the, that's the kind of the the problem with this. Not not a problem, but this movie's narrated in chapters, and Robert yeah. Downey Jr. has a running gag going through it, which I thought was funny. Is at the start he admits that he's a bad narrator, and that's so they can fill you in with plot bits because they know for a fact they're kind of all over the place sometimes, and they'll go back and be like, "Oh, that was my fault." Robert Downey Jr.'s character as the narrator. And fill you in with everything that just happened, but they do it in a manner that's more direct. So, oh yeah, there's this girl, and uh, man, she's hot, and I want to talk to her and everything. Oh, we know each other, shit, we came from the same hometown, that's cr- Oh, I should go back and fill you in. Okay, so when I was ten, we did this magic show, and I was gonna act like I was gonna saw her in half, but I didn't, and it turns out she's just a really good actor, that's why she moved to LA. Bam, caught you up, all right. You know yes. what's crazy is that that's exactly how the movie did it. <laughs> you know, it just like snaps back like a rubber band. Like, oh shit, by the way, you know, I almost cut my brother in half with a machete. Yeah, you're so... <laughs> uh, but this movie has what I will call some really good acting. Like genuinely, I think there's a lot of method acting too. Whenever someone is supposed to be drunk and or high, I believe that they were in fact drunk and or high. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. I don't know like the timeline of his life with his uh, historical drug usage, but this feels like it fits in that window. Again, I'm jumping ahead. There's a bit later where he's doped out of his mind and he can't help the crew. So Val Kilmer needs to be saved from bad guy insert bad guy Robert Downey Jr. and the girl are gonna do it but he's like I'm too high for this and he just sits in the car and then he lays down <laughs> but the thing is Robert yeah. Downey Jr. genuinely looks fucking high and then they film him in the back of the car asleep and he looks like he's genuinely asleep either this is great acting <laughs> or they were like Robert you got a scene and he was like nope and passed the fuck out and they were like roll with yeah. it well he wasn't nah. supposed to be in this scene but I guess uh let's figure it out alright bad guy uh kidnap him or something get him from one place to another somehow i feel like that would kind of explain the last half hour of the movie or so (laughs) just like robert downey jr would just show up the set asleep and they just had to shoot the fuck around it (laughs) (laughs) yes is that why there's almost no narration for the second half because we start out really narration heavy and then it's just like all right downey's busy (laughs) Well, we have to go over that because, like, the first hour of this movie, Robert Downey Jr. is doing a, a really good job. Like, I, I feel Great. like this, this character was written for him. Like, if you've yeah. seen any of, like, his, like, random videos on YouTube where he, like, goes around, like, New York City and bitching about stuff, like, that's him. Mm-hmm. That's totally him. And he's just in this situation, and we're going to figure out how he's going to get out of it. In in the back 30, it's almost like everybody was passed out. Fuck. I mean, Val Kilmer just showed up dead. <laughs> just showed up dead dead still showed up that's that's an excellent play on that reveal of him so spoilers everybody val kilmer gets shot bullet goes through val kilmer strikes robert downey jr you're like oh no it's a two for one nope they just get val but at the end of the movie he comes back robert downey jr again begins to narrate and says don't you hate it when movies just bring him back it's like they killed him for nothing but in this case he really did come back but why not fuck it and just bring everyone back and then everyone who died comes out i thought like, that was great all of the all well, of the bad guys the guys that have been trying to like hunt them down through the movie things like that they're coming in like oh hey nice to see you it's great we're all living yep And then the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, comes in and all is well. Well, that was that was a great joke. I mean, it's a joke in the movie, but that's in the movie. I promise. He steps out. I missed him if he did. I believe you. I believe you. It's also possible that you were high on like six Demerol that night. (laughs) Was that not in the movie for you guys? It might have been, but I wasn't. Like, I might have missed it. That's what I'm saying. I may have mixed it as well. I may have been staring at the manic pixie girl. Okay, so I don't know if we had two different versions of the movie. I I watched it on the HBO equivalent up here, which is Crave. It was just randomly there. Oh, okay. And yeah, that's that was, excuse me, it was like the soul was lifted out of my body. I didn't fucking understand the moment (laughs) for a second. Because, like, I'm dead fucking serious, guys. I'm not making this up. Abraham Lincoln walks in the fucking room. (laughs) 
And that was the goof, right? Like, bring back everybody, also Abe Lincoln. Did you say Abe Lincoln? <laughs> Maybe a rewatch is in order, because I swear I don't remember that. I thought it was just like all of the bad guys that have ended up being bodies throughout the, the movie. But if they're killing guys in plays, maybe it's just everybody. Yeah. Now, speaking mm -hmm. of theater and the, the art of acting, that's how this movie actually kind of gets started since we've been jumping around so much. Robert Downey Jr. is a petty criminal and he's still shit. And he's trying to steal some RoboCop stuff after this weird RoboCop murder suicide thing from some drunk guy pulling a ripped horn. Anyways, <laughs> it's fucking weird and he to escape the cops he flees inside of a uh what would you call that a casting call yeah oh, yeah 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 i i didn't yeah. even realize that's how all of this got started yeah he's running from the cops ends up in like a casting studio and just does an audition right there it's like oh cool yeah it's pretty happenstance you know after they kind of get caught doing whatever dirty deeds he he runs in there and just so happened the script that he has to read over is just basically what just happened to him <laughs> so like his buddy just got got he got shot by some random fucking whoever and so like he's reading this thing and he starts to break down and the director's just like yeah this is classic send this boy to hollywood there's a whole lot that just doesn't get explained in this movie and i'm sure that's like absolutely on purpose uh, the first one of those is he's running out of this toy store that he's just robbed and there's someone just on the fire escape, a lady who's like, don't move, the cops are on their way. And she shoots him? Yeah. Uh, who is she? Why is she defending this toy store? I, That's I don't the know. fucking pigeon lady from Home Alone 2. <laughs> That's the pigeon lady, okay. Yeah, I mean, equally as deranged, by all means. Because, like, you know, of course, you know, they, they did a crime. Exactly one crime, and they're running sure. away. But, like, sh what the fuck? I don't know. She's just some whack job. It's like, stop right there or I'll shoot. And just shoots. She just even fucking giving a minute to blink. She looks like she's just... Like, having a little retreat from a Christmas party up on the fourth floor. She's got to go outside, have a cigarette, maybe talk some shit to one of her friends, that kind of thing. And just happens to see somebody robbing a toy store. Has a gun on her, as you do in New York. Yeah, that's, that's uh, fair. It is New York, yeah. I guess so. You know, it's almost a wonder, like, when he ran in there, like, the director didn't have a gun, too. Yeah, I mean, think about this. Predator 2, they went down to the subway. Everyone had a gun. Predator had to kill everyone. So... The next place we end up is this Christmas party uh, going on at definitely not Harvey Weinstein's house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's Brazilian <laughs> Billy Bob's highest. All right. That's who it is. I don't know who this guy is, Maybe. but some big Hollywood hotshot. He's throwing a Christmas party, made sure to get all of the up and coming people. Lots of hot bitches need everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a bit in here which I thought was pretty good. Like, at the party, there's a guy. He's a douche. And he's hitting on yeah. uh, Sexy Chicken with the nice butt. And Robert Downey Jr. has this amazing monologue of, like, I'm going to kick your ass because I'm Steven Seagal, basically. And then it just immediately hard cuts to him outside getting fucking pummeled. And it's not even, like, a legit fist-to-cuff beatdown. It's, like, two guys no. that don't know how to fight. Yeah. But one at least is aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say one is at least on top. And he's just like kind of like smacking him around and gets like one good kick in. Yeah, he's like, take that. And he's just like. <clears throat> he goes back in and he's like, hey, did you see what happened to that, that girl that was passed out? And the woman's like, oh, yeah, she just left with that guy who just kicked your ass. OK, have a better night. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I was actually going to bring up like that kind of encapsulates the whole scene. I'm like. Everybody here's a dirtbag. Nobody gives a shit. It's so weird, right? Yeah, and Robert Downey Jr.'s character in this movie is supposed to be semi-wholesome or something because he goes on yeah. a couple tirades against I, I, uh, loose women and that type. I really didn't understand that angle because the movie, you know, as we discussed, like he saves what's her name per se. And you think, OK, he's like the white knight. He's not he's kind of like yep. neutral or maybe even chaotic good. Sure, why not? But then he, like, starts talking down about people. I'm just like, well, where do you sit? Like, what is this? Like, are you the good guy? Or is it the whole thing, like, everybody's a bad guy, and that's just the goof? Yeah, I, I think, think that's his thing, is he's the hypocrite. I think he is bitter. I think he's extremely bitter, because if you True. listen, to, like, he talks about his relationship with Harmony, the girl in the past, like, growing up, high school. They were good friends, and she was, uh, she got around. 
but she got around by sleeping with everyone except for him and his best friend. She He didn't oh. want her to sleep with his best friend. She totally slept with his best friend. So I, oh I think God. he's just bitter about that. Like, oh, she's my best friend, doesn't sleep with me, uh, so I'm going to hold a grudge. Downey doesn't know. Downey doesn't know, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It just seemed kind of odd because, like, you know, up until then, the movie's just like, okay, he's the good, good guy. He's, you know, he may not know how to scrap, you know, and all this stuff, and he can take a beating, kind of, but he's still the good guy. Like, no matter what, he's just, like, the shining knight. And he's like, oh, by the way, you're a slut. Peace, bitch. I think the psychology behind it might have been, you know, one, what I said earlier, like, slept with everybody except for him, but also, like, you know, they've come back together, and she's gorgeous and he knows that she's out of his league so he's trying to like neg her to the point where maybe maybe she finally does sleep with him because he's he's trying he's trying through the whole movie never gets there does he does he get there no he never gets there but maybe that's what he's trying to do i don't know it's just weird because like after the party they go to a party and like (laughs) they wind up finding each other again and like they have this kind of really cool back and forth where like they realize they're both smart asses and they just try like outsmart ass each other and i was like okay this is like a, a really nice bonding moment her like best friend or wingman comes up and tries to like swat him away but he, she just can't handle the fucking sarcasm gets washed away by it i thought that was pretty cool it was actually a, kind of a treat to see these two people kind of coalesce then, then like a half hour later it's all like by the way let me get out of my face yeah it was such a weird thing to build up that relationship and make you feel like it's cutesy, and then he yeah. shits on her. Like, he saves her so he can berate her, and it's fucking weird. But, you know, whatever. That's that's kind of how this whole movie is. Things happen, and then you go, that's weird, and then something else will happen, and you go, I guess, whatever. He saves, but he berates. <laughs> he berates, <laughs> but he saves. All right. <laughs> <laughs> In the same vein, like, we also meet Val Kilmer at that party, just hanging out with uh, Brazili Bob Thornton and whatever. And, like, his shtick is, like, he'll say, like, a quip and literally just drive away. Like, he's just <laughs> always in a car ready to fuck off. I don't... Why is it exactly that Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer meet? Like, I know Val Kilmer is, like, this detective that's there because yeah. he was hired uh, to sort of investigate some shit we'll get to later still a little confused by but i don't know like how the connections actually made that made these two guys like bffs it was at the party sure yeah because remember he got his ass kicked and he was helping him like clean his face and stuff oh it was after that okay but what i didn't understand is that okay we're gonna do a casting call to be a detective and then he's like okay it's gonna help your acting all right literally 10 seconds later a car is flying off of a ravine (laughs) into a lake in front of them and you go what is this for the acting and then he's yeah. like i gotta go save that person and then val kimmer's like the car is empty the car is empty what are you doing and then he charges out in front of him jumps in and saves a lady and i went what the fuck is happening no none of that was yeah. acting like that was uh val kilmer was hired to be an actual detective like because that's what he is he is a, he's not an actor he's an actual detective They end up following these guys and seeing, like, an actual murder take place, and that's when the car drives into the lake. Worst detective ever. He shoots the fucking lady in the head with his own gun, and then RDJ throws (laughs) the shit into the fucking pond after he was like, the car is empty. And that's why I feel like it's improv, because they're kind of yelling and trying to see who can outact each other, and then they gotta fill in the story holes that these guys are creating. You think when they drag the lake for the car, they won't find my $2,000 ceramic engraved pistol that you just threw right next to the car? Well, now that you've mentioned it, my bad. (laughs) You know, that's what it kind of feels like. Because, like, things are admittedly goofy. And, like, I got some good laughs and chuckles. But to agree with what you said earlier, like, it just seems kind of odd at the same time. Like, okay, so RDJ needs to be with this detective to learn detective stuff or whatever. They straight up witness a murder, a car careening off a cliff into a lake, and then, like, they see the perpetrators gawk at them, and, like, this whole <laughs> thing just feels like an odd Three Stooges routine, you know? Like, at what point the Robert Downey Jr. was like, yeah, detectives do this all the time. It's This is okay. The, the parallel that I'm getting is more like Big Lebowski. It's like there's a whole lot of okay, moving yeah. parts, and we don't exactly know how they fit into each other, but the Big Lebowski does a lot better job of, like, 
filling in those blanks uh, before the the movie ends. Where here I'm still just like, what? Okay, yeah, uh, incest, sure, totally. That's <laughs> incest for some reason. We never thought it was incest. The only reason that's brought up is because some dead bitch thought it was incest. That's what but I'm it's saying. It's not actually incest. Yeah. Why are There's we talking so about incest? Much. There's so much outside shit that just filters into this movie, which is fine because it does make for an, I won't say entertaining watch, but for a attention getting watch. You want to know what's going on, even though I don't think they yeah. know what's going on. And because after the body gets dumped in the fucking lake, it suddenly appears at Robert Downey Jr.'s house and he pisses on it like any normal human being would. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. <laughs> it's, it's it's just the goof like oh man it's crazy there's a dead body there what would be crazier than that oh shit iron man's taking a leak on her oh man how is he going to get out of this one <laughs> yeah. um so something i'm realizing this movie okay it's like a neo-noir kind of black comedy there are sure. a lot of red herrings and a lot of like loose threads that's that don't point don't tie up anywhere that's an extremely good point i think that's what's frustrating to a certain extent and it's kind of what got us all like off track watching the movie even though we're still on the rails it's because Mm -hmm. this movie (laughs) just puts too much out there at Mm -hmm. once it's the point where it's just legitimately like a fucking tangled headphone mess you just see it held in your hand like i guess i can't do better than this yeah, and if fucking a pup named Scooby Doo taught me anything, <laughs> I don't like red herring. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the next red herring that I was going to talk about is we get a phone call from the police that explicitly says that uh, the girl that he was hanging with the, the night before, Harmony, well, she's committed suicide. Five minutes later, she shows up at his apartment or hotel, whatever. A yeah. dame to kill for. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, this is the kind of thing that happens all the time for the next, like, 45, 50 minutes. You're like, what? Why? Ha <laughs> What? Why? <laughs> it's just like a cycle of that. Because, yeah. like, they, they throw a lot. A lot, lot, lot. So, like, you know, they see that lady get dunked in the lake, and all of a sudden she's at the apartment, and Val Kilmer calls and knows exactly what they're doing. Like, oh, they're trying to frame you, and I bet you if you look exactly on the northwest corner of your bed, you'll find a pistol ready to frame you. And it's just there, and he was right. And it's just like, I guess. You know, it's just, I, I guess. It almost feels like the movie's really trying to be, like, a, a Guy Ritchie movie with all these fast-moving parts. But, like, every scene just kind of ends up feeling overstimulated. And when it's over, it's just, like, a one-liner next scene. Exactly. I have, as my main note, I wish I could show you on my paper. My main note for this movie is, it's a barrage of mood swings and tone changes. You want to talk about a mood swing and tone change? Let me throw something down for you. I chose Gennaro's, but what do I know? I suck the heads off a of fish! God damn it. No. Yeah, what the fuck? It, it, I mean, was... it's from the movie. But yeah. like, yeah. even just hearing that again, I'm just like, confused once more. Yeah, uh, our, our main leading lady evidently was in a commercial for a German beer company, and we see the commercial twice for some reason and that's what it is that's what you get okay i'm gonna jump way back we were discussing the random good samaritan lady gunning down someone for honestly no good reason now this happens again where the random good samaritan randomly guns down the two baddies trying to kill robert downey jr and val kilmer uh the guy in the nacho truck is like get away from my truck and just murders him and you go (laughs) oh what I, okay <laughs> well i mean at that point i thought the guy was like that's not your truck boom just most to do <laughs> <laughs> but you're right it's just like some random npc just gunning down random people like they don't even know if they're a bad guy to be honest it almost feels like um ed o'neill's character from wayne's world just like absolutely just had enough and he Wait, just are snapped, we... and that's what happened are we talking about where we go to like dexter's i don't know what this is laboratory uh no i don't know what kind of company it is but a guy's just like tries to strong arm him and like bluffs and then they they're like oh who's the bitch now is like actually i don't i don't know any part of, i was just fucking around guys i don't know i'm pl- I, I don't know no girl i i was trying to rob you <laughs> yeah yeah it was right after that. they go to that um that famous park in la or whatever oh macarthur park yeah i've uh yeah that's it. i've heard that song this is this is nothing this is nothing but uh 
why do they go to Long Beach? Because they're in Long Beach, like, the the next day for no fucking reason at all, by the way. And that's not close. Isn't that where, what's her name lives? Harmony? Yeah. Well, that's where we caught up with her. Like, she wound up on the news, and that's how she got kind of, like, found out by uh, Brazili Bob Thornton. Because that, like, dude dressed up as, like, Pepsi Man, like, was trying to rob her house or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fucking like RoboCop G- guy that <laughs> fell out the window. <laughs> there's there's so many little parts like that of this movie that, I, like, we can't even talk about. There's just two, and none of them matter. Yeah, it's super weird, because, like, the, once everything kind of wraps, you realize how many non-sequiturs are in the movie. Like you said, RoboCop busts, and he's like, Dosakis are not, you're drinking with me, and he gets fucking got, oh, yeah. she gets on the news, and that's how she gets entangled in this whole thing. Like, Brazili Bob Thornton's like, hey, she looks hot get her in the party and that's what kind of gets this whole thing going no she got entangled in this whole thing from like years ago let me tell you how oh she yeah ha- it's even worse <laughs> it, it is so complicated <laughs> needlessly complicated what had happened was she was obsessed with this like pulp fiction writer not the not the movie but pulp fiction like hard-boiled detective movie writer Back in the day, and she has a little sister who evidently was a half-sister, and she's been lying to her, fucking gaslighting her sister this whole time, saying like, oh yeah, your dad was uh, this famous actor back in Hollywood, he did, you know, he was the guy that played this detective in the films, and then she believed her, the guy came to town to film how happenstance is all of this, by the way, is incredible. He Oof. came to town to film all those films or something, and she was like, oh, okay, that's my dad. I'm going to follow him back to Hollywood. So her sister follows him back to Hollywood, and then she sees him, what she thinks, committing some uh, incestuous adultery, and is like, all right, I got to hire this detective. And then that's when she herself gets killed why yes thank you oh, and that God. ladies and gentlemen is kiss kiss bang bang <laughs> yeah yeah it leaves you feeling exhausted in fact i'm feeling pretty parched oh oh thank you what i've got here today is from saint bernardus brewing company out of somewhere in belgium this is their christmas ale tis the season this is a 9.8 percent alcohol by volume so this is strong, but it doesn't quite taste like 9.8% alcohol. This is roasty and toasty, but there's a lot of like sweet fruit in there. There's like cherry and raisin, plum, that kind of sort of festive winter kind of fruit. But overall, it still tastes a little bit thin, believe it or not. It's not it's not heavy at all. It's 9.8, but it's not heavy. I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it, honestly, but still, it's pretty damn good. That'll get you going for whatever kind of celebration that you have going on this holiday season. And speaking of celebration, I think we have another party to get to. Oh, God. And this one's weird. (laughs) Yeah, this one's definitely weird. Oh, when he wanders upon like a Hitman Blood Bunny level? Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, that's perfect, Eric. Like, everybody in fucking weird masks. You get all these elites in there doing all kinds of weird shit. You got people in glass boxes just being naked and whatnot. And you're just like, okay, might be a vibe. Whatever. Yeah. (laughs) RDJ rolls in, and the first thing that falls out of his mouth is like, everyone here sucks. Please don't (laughs) notice me or nothing. Um, I'll tell you, I've never played Hitman Blood Money or whatever you just said over there, but I want to be invited to these kinds of L.A. parties. This is, like, he's right. Everybody there sucks, but it's weird. Also, there's some bitch that looks like the fawn from Pan's Labyrinth, except she got big oh, yeah. fake titties, so I'm kind of into that. Damn it, yeah, I'm the horny was... one again, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. well, RDJ uh... was right behind you, man. Like, he was gawking at that one lady <laughs> pretty hard before they had to drag his ass away. <laughs> Sir, your time at the bunny booth is closed. He's like, oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> the bunny booth. <laughs> that's not a bunny. That's a jackalope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then Indiana Jones runs in. She belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's already behind glass, so. <laughs> Whips a titty off. <laughs> yes, 100%. But he gets drug off and, and beat up in this weird kind of Pulp Fiction standing at the door, Vincent Vega scene. Yeah, there's a couple scenes in this movie that kind of fall victim just to Tarantino-ism, if that's even a thing. It's a word I just made up. Sure. But, like, you got, like, 
I don't know what it is like bad cop, bad cop routine. They just try to be, I have got a cool nickname. You've got a cool nickname. We're going to argue with each other in front of our victim. And he's going to be like, what the fuck? My finger's all cut off. Is Mustard a cool <laughs> nickname? Is that a no. cool nickname to have? His name is it Mustard. Never, it was never even cool from that guy from the Clue. Like, he was just fucking Colonel Mustard, you fucking condiment son of a bitch. The only what? person that can make Mustard cool is Brandon DiCamelico, or whatever the fuck his name is. Him and Rab and Rake Yon. Viva La Bam stuff? Mm. Yeah. Mustard. <laughs> it would do. I, I guess. <laughs> I mean... He just turned it into like what Pokemon do with their name. Oh yeah, yeah. mustard, mustard. I he doesn't have it. Does he like mustard? Is he somebody see him I putting mustard on a sandwich once or something? Like, did he cut the mustard? No idea why this guy's name is mustard. The other one's like frying pan or something stupid like that. <laughs> oh God, it's almost like the little <laughs> scene in X Men Overdub where he's like, "Man, what is you ketchup, mustard, and shit?" <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They might as well just said pork chop sandwiches and just ran out of the room. <laughs> yes. So, okay. Uh, we covered Robert Downey Jr. Gets his finger cut off once by, like, accidentally by Harmony in the door of her hotel room. They get it sewn back on. And this is where it's ripped off again. And then it eventually, he winds up in, I don't know where this, where this apartment is that he ends up, but it gets eaten by a dog. Oh. Well, that's uh, Mean Mr. Mustard's place. He just, like, is winds it? up there haphazardly when uh, Ramona Flowers, or whatever the fuck her name is, from Scott Pilgrim gets got. Yep. Um, I have her down as Pink Haired Girl. She is in the credits as, let me check. Pink Haired Girl. Girl. Yep. All right. Yep. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, but she gets dead real fucking quick. Yeah. I mean, we all saw it coming. Like, the, the whole conversation was a little swishy, to say the least. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, baby, you ain't do nothing wrong. She's like, ah, oh, thanks for, you know, whatever. Dumb bitch. Uh, no, she, he, he didn't say that, but it was implied pretty heavily. And with two rounds. <laughs> and at some point, we have the, uh, the sort of the red herring, the pink herring, if you will, that she was, we were supposed to believe at some point that she was Harmony's little sister but they did a switcheroo again or something am i wrong i don't know who knows well like we discussed before about the plot being the hot mess that it is the plot is a hot mess mm -hmm. i mean it's just it, it's it is its own definition and by this point the movie kind of just changes gears in like the most awkward way it like an hour in we still have like a half hour left and so on the movie feels like it's about to resolve mm -hmm. like i know like this being a kind of like a old-fashioned detective thriller mystery or what have you kind of updated for 2005 mm -hmm. sure there's got to be a part where like you know the detective just like puts his hat on the desk like ah damn I, I almost got him and then at the last minute he gets like a little piece of information to keep the thing going it never feels like that it legitimately feels like the movie just is about to end yeah there's even a point and we might have mentioned it already where they're like all right everything's wrapped up cool you know the case is solved Let's move on with our lives. But wait, the case isn't actually really solved now, is it? Nope, we've got more detective work to do. The last act is just basically uh, Shane Black being like, Guys, I invented Lethal Weapon. Let's do gun stuff. And Robert Downey Jr. is like, Sweet, I want to do Russian roulette. Bang! And fucking kills a guy. Even earlier when I said that the dialogue felt like it came out of like a 14, 15 year old boy, the last bit of action just feels like a kid just like rattling off the coolest action scene he ever thought of he's like what if like a coffin flew out of a car landed on a sign then iron man just kind of grabs it and he swishes a gun out of the air and shoots a guy from like a hundred feet away but gets him right in the heart and he says something like oh shit that's what happens <laughs> no he no, says no. he doesn't he says magic man or something like that because he did magic earlier in the movie and he's got like those quick hands oh shit oh. i got iron man <laughs> oh whatever magic man. i don't know now you see me now you don't and he falls over dead yeah and, and it also feels like the movie takes the character like a kid would take action figures and just kind of like just throw them the fuck around yeah dude it's all over the place. You know what else there is that we haven't even talked about? There's a mental hospital that has something to do with all of this. I still don't know why. 
Well, that was like one of the many red herrings. They had this whole like subplot about Robert Downey Jr. noticing that the lady they found in the lake didn't have underpants. So the only logical conclusion is that she was a mental patient from this fucking hospital where they just don't put underpants on their patients. And we find that out because of this obese mental patient just pulls down her pants, goes, he, he, Merry Christmas. Yeah, and there's Fuck. no one else around. The idea that he comes up with is that... Um, it was a fake daughter. They killed the real daughter, and now the fake daughter came from the mental hospital and is... I don't know if any of that's right, actually. It, it, you know what? The whole thing just reeks of, like, Shane Black was like, hey, when are we getting to the dick gun? Yes, it was written for the dick gun and the big tough guy <laughs> scene where he goes and slaps around the old man, which felt, yeah. <laughs> again, awkward. Like... He walks in there and he's like, you've been molesting, yeah, you've been molesting your daughter. And he's like, what? I love my daughter. And he smacks him. And the guy's like, oh, you son of a bitch, hitting an old man. You tough guy? And he goes, yeah, I'm a big, tough guy. And then he just rolls off. And you go, (laughs) what the fuck? I don't know. Like, they they tried to do something. Like, I honestly don't really, I kind of see where it's coming from, but I kind of don't at the same time. Because, like, you know, RDJ, he empties out the revolver for like a deer hunter moment trying to do Russian roulette with the guy and I guess I mean not, not a guess but the goof is no. that he immediately blows the guy away ha ha that, Who taught you that, that that scene took me so aback I, he puts one round in the revolver does the spin and is like you've got an 8% chance and Val Kilmer's like who the fuck taught you math that's like 13 and a half man that's way higher or something I don't know <laughs> but it, it doesn't fucking matter it, it came off like that scene uh, when when they're chatting after having that little debate. It came off like uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world when he's like, then on Monday, you'll talk to the cleaning lady and she'll send you to the cleaners because she, she's off on the weekend. No, because yeah, today's just, Friday and you'll be dust. It's kind of like that uncool kid trying to be funny and he's just reiterating the joke he heard yesterday and it's just like, all right, thanks, man. Like, it's funny. It is a funny scene, but that's what it came off to me. Like, you got to do a little bit too much explaining to figure out your math there. Wouldn't that be great if he was just like, blew him away? He's like, oh my God, milk and eggs, bitch. And they just walked off. (laughs) Okay, so we've talked about it, but the movie just kind of ends like right here. Uh, People get shot. I don't know. Uh, Does Harmony, she die? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. No, no. Everybody comes back at the end. Happy ending. Abe Lincoln. Robert Downey yes. Jr. lives. Everyone else is in this sort of fictional fairy tale in between land of living and dying. We're not really sure. Yeah. I, and I know up to this point, for those listening, they're just like, wow, <laughs> they're really all over the place talking about this shit. <laughs> well, you got to understand when this shit wraps up, nothing fucking matters. Everything oh. was a red herring. You got me, Shane. I'm so God. No, I just spent fucking an hour and 45 minutes going, wait, what? <laughs> Let me let me let me get this like I I liked this movie but you're right it is all over the place there are a dozen red herrings a dozen threads that just don't get tied up we've done a lot of Quentin Tarantino and Guy Ritchie comparisons and they are very on point but even those don't have enough cocaine to lead me to the result that this became because holy shit, this is all over the place. Shane Black, yeah. this is a very solid movie, but it needed a lot more work than what you put down here. Ooh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's definitely like first or second draft. And it also doesn't help that the whole thing just comes off as immature. It just needs like another eye. Somebody needs to like to rewrite this, sprinkle a little just like cohesiveness in there. Like it's a little too loose, but to be honest, it's still a little fun. I mean... It's a shame that the movie ends kind of the way it does because, like, there's no reason to watch it again. <laughs> like, the mystery is that there's no mystery. And if that's the goof, I got goofed on, I guess. For me, the movie is very witty. It's very well made. It's the type of movie that you've got to watch more than once to fully grasp and appreciate. The problem is, I don't want to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. That was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show, leave it in that comment section below. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to bash whatever bell icon you got so you don't miss what we've got brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on social media. We're all over them platforms, y'all. Hee <laughs> hee. You can find us anywhere that podcasts 
are available, including YouTube. Give us a shot. We're kind of funny sometimes. And then, you know, if you don't, maybe we can get, like, Robert Downey Jr. to narrate us giving you, like, a million and one red herrings before we play Russian roulette and shoot you on the first go. But it's okay. Halfway through, he's just going to stop narrating and just get going with the story. I say we should just take RDJ's advice, method act, and just take a nap. Bingo. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah.